Hi, so welcome or welcome back to quickly jump in on a question that often gets asked in lifting and fitness circles, and that is when is it okay to skip a session or to cut a session short or to go easy, often relevant to like life is tough or I'm sick or weather's bad or any other number of things. So sadly, I don't have a solid answer for you, especially not something like, oh, you have to be hardcore and macho and be a man and you have to never skip a day. Like, I don't find that super effective in the long term. But what I want to do today is a little bit of a case study actually on me because what I was doing recently was uploading my training footage from my phone over to my computer because my computer has more space than my phone. So I was categorizing it so it's easy to reference back both for me to view and also in case I want to use it in a video. And there, there was a little stretch of time where I forgot the details at the moment. I forgot that I was going through stuff and things where I noticed that for some weeks I had very little training and there was even periods where there was just absolutely no footage. So I want to just show what that was here. Let me back also using this as an excuse to practice new tech stuff so how i organize things at the moment is for previous years footage and training footage it's just lumped into a full year early on i wasn't training much except when i wanted to very specifically share something so a couple random examples these are random examples from 2021 But as you see, for the entire year, there's not much. 2022, there's more. A random example, I don't know. That's what we have in 2023. This is where I really started to regularly record. I can tell. Let's see what's this year. All RDLs. It's looking for random things. <laughs> I picked another RDL video. Okay, let's see if this is non RDL. Are you kidding? I grabbed RDL three times in a row. Okay, I just for kicks, I had to do something the fourth time. A non RDL. Okay, so anyway, it was 2023 footage. For 2024, I realize it's easier to organize it by month, so it's not this massive blob of just files. So as I was updating, first you'll notice there's nothing in April. It goes from March here, March here, and then May. But also, if you start looking in March, Train the 7th, train the 11th, the 14th, the 21st, the 24th, and the 27th. So it was not very high frequency. Whereas February 1st, 3rd, 8th, 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, well, I was on vacation and I was able to train every day at a gym for a short period of time, which very cool gym, by the way. Okay. I'll show their footage at another video that need to take up time. And for instance, in January, like a lot more throughout that one month. But if you look here in March, it's yeah, less frequent. And in May, there were only three recorded training sections and absolutely nothing in April. So now that I've shown you that, I got the full size. There we go. A lot of this comes down to, yes, you don't want to go too easy on yourself. A kind of, it's almost a philosophical dichotomy I see. These two important ingredients of life are both suffering and compassion. Both are essential within the right context and the right dosages. So putting yourself through suffering, through hardship, like physically demanding training, 
is important, but also there's context of what happens in life. So the reason in March I was training less frequently, in April I recorded absolutely nothing, and in May I also wasn't doing very much. But also if you look at the individual, you can't see the screen. If you look at the individual days, there aren't as many exercises. Here in the, let's see, the 24th of March. Oh, that's, okay, that's a fairly close. Let's see, think about in May. Yeah, here, only four exercises. 29th of May, four exercises. I was training less frequently and less overall work. So this is where you have to start evaluating priorities where a lot of full screen again. Yeah, I know tech. So. I enjoy bodybuilding. So for me in the long term, putting on mass overall, but also in the right areas and being relatively lean, able to get leaner is important, but also there's additional life priorities on top of that. And I've been lifting weights since I was 15. I've been doing some form of exercise since at least 14, maybe younger. I am going to be working on a video about my full training history, hopefully in the near future. Hopefully my next video after this, if anything, so I can get more details. But I know I will go back to the gym. But also there have been periods in my life where I stopped going for several months at a time, like five or more months. What I've learned is momentum is important. You probably heard things such as showing up is 50% of the game or some variation of that. And there, there are times when that's true and times when that's not true. When you showing up is a question, then showing up is the most important thing. Doesn't matter what you do. You showing up is the thing you have to work on, which during that's the time, I can't remember all the details exactly a few months ago. I'm recording this in June now, but life happens. There are times where there are additional stressors. Priorities have to get shifted. So I knew at minimum I needed to keep showing up. And things such as additional workload for the session or even recording the session were slapping on extra mental effort that actually risked me not showing up. So I'll so in those contexts, when I knew I had been training for years and years. And I would be willing to show up, but I had also experienced times where I had stopped showing up. And I knew the importance of momentum is I decided I'll change whatever I need to change to ensure I still show up. Because right now I am in a state where showing up is a question, not a given. So while it's a question, I'll cut back on work, maybe skip some sessions, but keep some degree of momentum. I even stop recording. That's why there are, there is an entire month with no training footage. Once I began to rebuild momentum, and showing up was no longer the question, it was a given. Then I could begin building on that. So I don't know how much value this will add, but the important thing that I want to try to communicate to you is if you're still in a state of your training, whether you're new. Or you've been training before and you're in a complicated point of your life what i say you need to evaluate is whether or not showing up is a question if it is you need to restructure things so you are still showing up and you maintain momentum if that means training less frequently and less over work in each session but you are still physically showing up that is what you need to do. However, if you're just wanting to go easy on yourself because it's uncomfortable, there is a certain point where you have to get over yourself. But on the other hand, constantly trying to do push to get over yourself and also 
be a detriment. It comes down to the dosage is the poison. As an analogy, plants use caffeine as a pesticide against bugs. Well, as a pesticide literally to kill the things that try to eat the plants. We use it as a stimulant to enhance us, to keep us awake. But in the wrong dosage, it can still kill us. That whole get over yourself, you have to go hard is a similar thing. In the right dosages, in the right context, it can enhance us. It can make us better. It can push us to new levels in the wrong context. It can be a detriment. So if you're in a place where you know you're going to show up, that's where you push hard. That's where you question stimulus to fatigue, how much volume you can manage, supersets versus not supersets, your rest times, your exercise selection. If you are in a place where you're not even certain you can manage to get yourself to show up, it's better to tell yourself, I'm going to walk in the doors. And if that's all I can do, that's what I'm going to do. Because there was a period for me years ago, I don't remember how many years ago, where I told myself for 90 days, I'm going to walk in the doors of the gym. That's all I'm required to do. If that's all I can do, I'll turn around and walk back out. And for a lot of those days, all I related was like some foam rolling and like some stretches and breathing exercises. Even the empty bar felt heavy. But I kept doing it. I kept walking in the doors. And near the end, in the final few weeks... The weights didn't feel heavy. I finally felt excited. But for the first two plus months, I didn't want to show up. But I recognized I was at a point where showing up was a question, and I had to answer yes. I could pull back everything else as long as the answer was yes. Once it was no longer a question, I'm game to go hard. So, don't want to go on too long. Hopefully, you can get what you need to get from that. Thanks for watching.